you here with another great video I'm here with my border collie Lindy at my dog training academy here in Southwest Florida. Today I wanted to talk to you today about e-collar training versus leash and collar training and why the e-collar is better. Okay? Now you probably heard all kinds of stories about the e-collar and uh, right now I'm gonna try to clear up a lot of confusion. I feel there's a lot of confusion out there. Wendy, come sit. Out there about e collar training and leash and collar training, uh, which is better. And, you know, they both have the advantages, okay? But the big thing I wanna discuss first with you, real quick, okay? And I'm gonna make this a boring video here or anything like that. You have, Wendy, sit, okay? We have the prong collar. Wendy, come. Wendy, come over here. Come here. Don't hang out the video now. Down. Down. We have the prong collar, excuse me, okay? We have the slip ring collar, okay? Neither one of these tools are going to do anybody any good. They don't know how to use them. Most of the time I see people with a slip ring collar. They have it on upside down, so it does not release, and that does pressure onto the dog's throat. The other thing I see people do with the prong collar is they have it sized way too big. They think that you're supposed to take it and slip it over the dog's head like this. It's not. It's designed to add and subtract links just like you do a necklace and fit it to the dog's neck. So if I was to put this on Lindy's neck right now, the whole idea of it, this is designed to stay in the center of the neck. Most of the time you'll see people with them have them down here. The other part is they have goes and a lot of people don't have it hooked to that. But why? They're both very effective if you know how to use them. Okay? So my big thing is I tell everybody there's nothing wrong with doing basic leash training, you know, teaching the dog not to break away with leash and collar training and this, you know how to just teach the dog if you ask it to sit and pop up. You know, it all means the same thing, attention. Same thing with the e collar Okay? The problem is, what I see people have is that, where do you go after you've done your basics, whether it's, you know, heel, sit, stay, down, come, or whatever, where do you go from there? And the most of the time that people fail at leash training is because if the dog doesn't listen, they put all this pressure, and if you notice, Lindy, when I snap this, if you notice the attitude of the dog, it changes. But what happens is people get so frustrated with their dog, they put all that frustration behind them. And, and a lot of times people are using it and they're staring their dog. They, they got tension like this. Constantly tension on the leash. It's totally wrong. You have to have a loose leash and the dog has to learn to walk on a loose leash with no tension. The tool is designed to pop and release to snap the dog out of it. That's it. No different than the e-collar. Why the e-collar is better? Because down the line, it's gonna give you invisible leash. So the difference is, is timing to connect with the dog. Okay, so if the dog is digging a hole, by the time you chase the leash, you ain't gonna, dog's gonna forget. Dog breaks out the front door, dog runs after a car, they don't know what's wrong. But when the dog is conditioned properly to the e-collar and understands what it means, it means, Focus. So if you watch Lindy, I'm looking for just enough reaction, there he goes, that he's looking for something. So it allows me to put very little pressure of low levels of stimulation to get the dog to focus on me. Because if you can't teach a dog to focus and pay attention to you, you're never going to stop it from breaking away. You're never, it's never going to learn come one call. It's never going to learn anything else. So the high idea is that most people use this tool wrong. There's a conditioning stage, whether you're using the prong collar, the traditional choke chain that I showed you earlier, or the e-collar. You don't just put a collar on a dog and expect the dog to mind. You don't just put an e-collar on the dog and start pressing a button and think the dog is going to listen to you. The dog is going to run high, doesn't even understand what it means. And all these people put all this frustration, they start yelling at the dog, because the dog got away and the dog looks at you like, what's up? What is, they don't understand what's going on. Okay, so it's very basic. 
all us professionals that TTE call it training, at least in my book, I don't know, um, you know, a lot of people look at if you're not using a clicker, you're not doing positive reinforcement. Uh, what is the difference between clicking and feeding the dog? And if I use the remote and tap the button, Lindy, and tap, good boy, I give him a food reward. Uh, good boy, I give him a toy reward. Okay, there's no difference. The difference is, is that leash training, you see people doing this constantly. Forget that. Okay, the dog has to learn that breaking away from you is wrong. So if I go, I want Lindy to follow me. If I back up, I want them to follow me. To the, to the dog, it means come, stay with you. But in the beginning, the dog don't know breaking away from you is wrong. So we put pressure, the dog goes away from you, I tap the button, put pressure. I stop, it means stay. Doesn't mean sit, doesn't mean lay down, it just means stay period, safety zone. Does mean not break away from me no matter what distractions are going on, okay? So these are the conditioning stages, okay, with the dog. So if I tap this button and say, sit, Lindy, good boy, why can't I give him a food reward? No different than tapping with a clicker and giving him a food reward. So I hear all these critics out there, all these people, I just really think that it's just so misunderstood because there's so much information out there that it's really how you break it down and teach people, you know, how to do it. And I do this for over 20 years now. Okay, I was using the call roll callers 20 years ago. The technology has changed. I mean, we have technology today that we did not have. And to me, uh, I don't want to chase a leash forever. So leash training, I'm limited because it takes a long time to get that reliable off-leash control where the e-caller gives me that invisible connection once my dog is conditioned to it and understands that it means focus on me. Okay, if I say, Lindy, good boy. Watch me turn the pressure up. Good boy. Lindy free. Good job. Okay. So I hope I cleared up some confusion. I hope uh, you, know, you really understand that I'm not knocking uh, leash training. I'm not knocking clicker training. I'm not knocking e collar training. I'm just trying to break up and put some helpful information out there for anybody that's looking for it that using an e collar is not a bad thing. You need to learn from a professional. Okay. Learn and understand how to do it properly. Don't just listen to all the negative out there with people because that to me is all them negative people out there. They don't do it every day and they haven't been. And if they want to keep complaining about it to me is that they're totally out of line because they don't know anything about it. They just heard about it, okay? So I do it every day for a living. I teach people, hundreds of dogs a year. I've trained thousands of dogs. I've trained thousands of people with e-collar training. And I still do today. I'll train people in leash training. But I guarantee you, everybody that trains personally with me, they always say to me, Dennis, what do we do? I want to use that e-collar. I want to be able to do what you do with your dog. I want to be able to have that off-leash control, that reliability, because everything's for the safety of the dog. Okay, until next time, my name is Dennis Daya. Lindy and I will see you in the next video. Okay, Lindy? Bye, Lindy. Okay, let's go. Okay.